Namaste, Dhanavat Pranam. By the instruction and grace of our spiritual master, Om Vishnu Pad Paramahamsa Sri Pad Bhakti Madhava Puri Maharaj, we are here reading Srimad Bhagavatam. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Canto 2, The Cosmic Manifestation, Chapter 6, Texts 40 through 41. Vishudam Kevalam Jnanam. Pratyak samyag avastitam, satyam pornam anadyantam, nirgunam nityam advayam, rishavedanti munaya, prashantatta minbrishaya, yadatha deva satarkais, tirodhyeta viplutam. The personality of Godhead is pure being free from all contaminations of material tinges. He is the absolute truth and the embodiment of full and perfect knowledge. He is all pervading without beginning or end and without rival. O Narada, O great sage, the great thinkers can know him when completely freed from all material hankerings and when sheltered under undisturbed conditions of the senses. Otherwise, by untenable arguments, all is distorted and the Lord disappears from our sight. Purport. Here is an estimation of the Lord apart from his transcendental activities in the temporary material creations. Mayavad philosophy tries to uh, designate the Lord as contaminated by a material body when he accepts forms of incarnation. This sort of interpolation is completely denied herein by the explanation that the Lord's position is pure and unalloyed in all circumstances. According to Mayavad philosophy, the spirit soul, when covered by nescience, is designated as jiva. But when freed from such ignorance or nescience, he merges in the impersonal existence of the absolute truth. But here it is said that the Lord is eternally the symbol of full and perfect knowledge. This is his speciality, perpetual freedom from all material contaminations. This distinguishes the Lord from the individual common living entities who have the aptitude for being subordinated by nescience and thus becoming materially designated. In the Vedas, it is said that the Lord is Vijnanam Anandam, full of bliss and knowledge. The conditioned souls are never to be compared to him because such individual souls have the tendency to become contaminated. Although after liberation, the living entity can become one with the same quality of existence as the Lord, his very tendency to become contaminated, which the Lord never has, makes the individual living entity different from the Lord. In the Vedas, it is said, Sudham Apa Pavidham. Sudham Apa Pavidham. The individual Atma becomes polluted by sin, but the Lord is never contaminated by sins. The Lord is compared to the powerful sun. The sun is never contaminated by anything infectious because it is so powerful. On the contrary, infected things are sterilized by the rays of the sun. Similarly, the Lord is never contaminated by sins. On the contrary, the sinful living entities become sterilized by contact with the Lord. This means that the Lord is also all-pervading like the sun. And as such, the word pratyak is used in this verse. Nothing is excluded from the expansions of the Lord's potency. The Lord is within everything, and he is also, uh, and he is all covering also, without being disturbed by the activities of the individual souls. He is therefore infinite, and the living entities are infinitesimal. In the Vedas, it is said that only the Lord alone exists, and all others' existences depend on him. He is the generating reservoir for everyone's existential capacity. He is the supreme truth of all other categorical truths. He is the source of everyone's opulence, and therefore no one can equal him in opulence. 
being full of all opulences, namely wealth, fame, strength, beauty, knowledge, and renunciation, certainly he is the supreme person. And because he is a person, he has many personal qualities, although he is transcendental to the material modes. We have already discussed the statement, Itambuto Gunha Hari, Bhagavatam 1.7.10. His transcendental qualities are so attractive that even the liberated souls, the Atma Ramas, are also attracted by them. Although possessed of all personal qualities, he is nevertheless omnipotent. Therefore, personally, he has nothing to do, for everything is being carried out by his omnipotent energies. This is confirmed by Vedic mantras. This suggests his specific spiritual form, which can never be experienced by the material senses. He can be seen only when the senses are purified by devotional service. As such, there are basic differences between the Lord and the living entities in so many respects. No one can be compared to the Lord as the Vedas declare, Ekam Evad Viti Yam Brahma. The Lord has no competitor, and he, is, uh, he has nothing to fear from any other being, nor can anyone be equal to him. Although he is the root of all other beings, there are basic differences between him and other beings. Otherwise, there would have been no necessity for the statement in the previous verse that no one can know him 100% as he is, nayam vidanti tatvena. That no one can fully understand him is explained also in this verse, but the qualification for understanding to some degree is mentioned here. Only the prashantas, or the unalloyed devotees of the Lord, can know him to a greater extent. The reason is that the devotees have no demands in their lives, but to be obedient servants of the Lord. While all others, namely by the uh, while all others, namely the empiric philosophers, the mystics, and the fruit of workers, all basically have some demand, and as such, they cannot be pacified. The fruit of worker wants reward for his work. The mystic wants some perfection of life, and the empiric philosopher wants to merge in the existence of the Lord. Somehow or other. As long as there is a demand for sense satisfaction, there is no chance for pacification. On the contrary, by unnecessary dry speculative arguments, the whole matter becomes distorted, and thus the Lord moves still further away from our understanding. The dry speculators, however, because of their following the principles of austerity and penance, can have knowledge of the impersonal features of the Lord to some extent, but there is no chance of their understanding his ultimate form as Govinda, because only the Amalatmanas, or the completely sinless persons, uh, can accept pure devotional service to the Lord, as confirmed in Bhagavad Gita 7.28. Yesham Tvantagatam Papam Text 42. Adyo Vatra Adyo Vatra Purusha Parasya Kalas Prabhava Sarasan Manascha Dravyam Vikaro Guna Indriyani Karna Dakshai Vishnu is the first incarnation of the Supreme Lord, and he is the master of eternal time, space, cause and effects, mind, the elements, the material ego, the modes of nature, the senses, the universal form of the Lord, Garbha Dakshai Vishnu, and the sum total of all living beings, both moving and non-moving. Purport. 
that the material creation is not permanent has been discussed many times here and before. The material creation is but a temporary exhibition of the material energy of the Almighty God. This material manifestation is necessary to give a chance to the conditioned souls who are unwilling to associate with the Lord in the relationship of loving transcendental service. Such unwilling conditioned souls are not allowed to enter into the liberated life of spiritual existence because at heart they are not willing to serve. Instead, they want to enjoy themselves as imitation gods. The living entities are, are constitutionally eternal servitors of the Lord, but some of them, because of misusing their independence, do not wish to serve. Therefore, they are allowed to enjoy the material nature, which is called maya or illusion. It is called illusion because the living beings under the clutches of maya are not factually enjoyers, although they think they are, being illusioned by maya. Such illusioned living entities are given a chance at intervals to rectify their perverted mentality of becoming false masters of the material nature, and they are imparted lessons from the Vedas about their eternal relationship with the Supreme Lord Krishna. Vedais Chasarvai or Hameva Vedya. So the temporary creation of the material manifestation is an exhibition of the material energy of the Lord. And to manage the whole show, the Supreme Lord incarnates himself as the Karana, as the Karana, Karanar Navashayi Vishnu. Just as a magistrate is deputed by the government to manage affairs temporarily. This Karnadakshai Vishnu causes the manifestation of material creation by looking over his material energy. Saikshata. In the first volume of this book, we have already discussed to some extent the explanation of the verse Jagre Purusham Rupam. The duration of the illusory play of material creation is called a kalpa. And we have already discussed the creations taking place in kalpa after kalpa. By his incarnation and the activities of his potencies, the complete ingredients of creation, namely time, space, cause, result, mind, and the gross and subtle elements, and their interactional modes of nature, goodness, passion, and ignorance, and then the senses and their reservoir source, the gigantic universal form as the second incarnation, Garbhodaksha Vishnu, and all living beings, both moving and standing, which come out of the second incarnation, all become manifested. Ultimately, all these creative elements and the creation itself are but manifestations of the Supreme Lord's potencies. Nothing is independent of the control of the Supreme Being. This first incarnation in the material creation, namely Karanar Navashayi Vishnu, is the plenary part of the original personality of Godhead Sri Krishna, described in Brahma Samhita 5.48 as follows. Yasyaika Nishva Sita Kala Matava Lambya Jivanti Loma Vilaja Jagaranda Nata Vishnur Mahansa Iha Yasya Kala Vishesho Govindam Adi Purusham Tamaham Bhajami. All the innumerable universes are maintained only during the breathing period of Mahavishnu or Karana Narvasai Vishnu who is only a plenary part of Govinda, the original personality of Godhead, Lord Krishna. Texts 43 through 45. Aham bhavo yag, aham bhavo yagya ime prajesha, dakshadayo yeba vadasya adayascha, svarloka pala ka galoka pala, nirloka palas tala loka pala. Gandharva vidya dara chara nesha ye yaksha raksho raga naganata ye ye varshi nam rashabha pitranam tajendra sidhesvara dana vendra anye cha ye prata pischa pischa bhuta kusmanda yado mriga pakshadhishaha yakincha loke bhagavan mahasvad Sri Hrivi Bhutyatma Vad Ad 
Tadvam param rupavar asvarupam. I myself, Brahma, Lord Shiva, Lord Vishnu, great generators of living beings like Daksha and Prajapati, yourselves, Narada and the Kumaras, heavenly demigods like Indra and Chandra, the leaders of the Burloka planets, the leaders of the earthly planets, the leaders of the lower planets, the leaders of the Kandarva planets, the leaders of the Vidyadhara planets, the leaders of the Charanaloka planets, the leaders of the Yakshas, Rakshas, and Uragas, the great sages and great demons, the great atheists and the great spacemen, as well as the dead bodies, evil spirits, Satan's jinn, Kushpandas, great aquatics, great beasts, and great birds, etc. In other words, anything and everything which is exceptionally possessed of power, opulence, mental and perceptual dexterity, strength, forgiveness, beauty, modesty, opulence, and breeding, whether in form, or formless, may appear to be the specific truth and the form of the Lord, but actually they are not so. They are only a fragment of the transcendental potency of the Lord. Purport. Those in the list above, beginning with the name Brahmaji, the first living creature within the universe, down to Lord Shiva, Lord Vishnu, Narada, and other powerful demigods, men, supermen, sages, rishis, and other lower creatures of extraordinary strength and opulence, including the dead bodies, satans, evil spirits, jinn, aquatics, birds, and beasts, may appear to be the Supreme Lord, but factually none of them is the Supreme Lord. Every one of them possesses only fragment of the great potencies of the Supreme Lord. The less intelligent man is surprised to see the wonderful actions of material phenomena as the aberrant, uh, as the uh, Aboriginals are fearful of a great thunderbolt, a great and gigantic banyan tree, or a great lofty mountain in the jungle. For such undeveloped human beings, merely the slight display of the Lord's potency is captivating. A still more advanced person is captivated by the powers of the demigods and goddesses. Therefore, those who are simply astonished by the powers of anything in the creation of the Lord, without any factual information of the Lord himself, are known as shakta, uh, saktas, or worshippers of great powers. The modern scientist is also captivated by the wonderful actions and reactions of natural phenomena, and uh, therefore, they are also a shakta. These lower grade persons gradually rise to become saryas, saryas, worshippers of the sun god, or ganaptayas, Worshippers of the mass of people as Janata Janardana or Darid, uh, Daridra Narayana, etc., in the form of Ganapati, and then rise to the platform of worshiping Lord Shiva in the search for the ever existent soul, and then to the stage of worshiping Lord Vishnu, the super soul, etc., without any information of Govinda, Lord Krishna, who is the original Lord Vishnu. In other ways, some are worshippers of race, nationality, birds, beasts, evil spirits, satans, etc. The general worship of Sanideva, the lord of distressful condition, and Sitala Devi, the goddess of smallpox, is also common to the mass of people. And there are many foolish men who worship the mass of people or the poor class of men. So different persons, societies, and communities, etc., worship some of the potent manifestations of the Lord, wrongly accepting the powerful object as God. But in this verse, it is advised by Brahmaji that none of them is the Supreme Lord. They are only borrowed plumes from the original Almighty, Lord Sri Krishna. When the Lord advises in Bhagavad Gita to worship him alone, it is to be understood that worshiping Lord Krishna includes worshiping all that is mentioned, because he, Lord Krishna, includes everyone. When the Lord is described as formless in the Vedic literatures, it is to be understood that all these forms mentioned above within the experience of universal knowledge are different exhibitions of the Lord's transcendental potencies only, and none of them factually represents the transcendental form of the Lord. But when the Lord actually descends to the earth or anywhere within the universe, the less intelligent class of men also mistake him to be one of them. 
and thus they imagine the transcendence to be formless or impersonal. Factually, the Lord is not formless, nor does he belong to any of the multiforms experienced within the universal forms. One should try to know the truth about the Lord by following the instruction of Brahmaji. Thus ends our reading for today. We'll continue from text 46 on Monday, hopefully. Jai Om Vishnu Pad Paramahamsa Shri Pad Bhakti Madhava Puri Maharaj Ki Jai. Jai Srila Prabhupada Srila Guru Maharaj Srila Guru Dev Srila Acharya Dev Srila Shanta Maharaj Ki Jai. Jai Rupanuga Guru Varga Ki Jai. Our glorious to the assembled devotees, our glorious to the worldwide devotees, Bhaktivrinda Ki Jai. Jai Navadvip Dam Ki Jai, Mayapur Dam Ki Jai, Nashringa Pali Dam Ki Jai, Jagannath Puri Dam Ki Jai, Baladev Subhadra Jagannath Ju Ki Jai. Ganga Mai Yamuna Mai Ki Jai, Vrindavan Dam Ki Jai, Giri Govardhan Gupta Govardhan Dam Ki Jai, Sham Kund Radhakund Ki Jai. Tulsi Devi, Bhakti Devi, Vrinda Devi Ki Jai. Jai, Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai, Harinam Sankirtan Yagya Ki Jai. Princeton Bhaktivedanta Institute Ki Jai. Sri Chaitanya Saraswat Institute Ki Jai. Sri Chaitanya Saraswat Mat Ki Jai. Tadiya Shaka Mat Ki Jai. Nitai Gora Pramanam Ji. Hari 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 Bo. Dhanava Pranams. Hare Krishna.